beforehand. So The Eaters of Light is the first new series story written by a classic writer, and just so happens that that classic writer is Rona Munro, responsible for such beautiful pieces of work as survival. Set in 2 AD, we're obviously going to be seeing a little bit of the Roman Empire, particularly the Ninth Legion. I have to say, even though I really do enjoy pieces of fiction that explore eras of the British Empire, such as the Regency era and the Victorian era, it'll be nice to see something very much so distantly in the past, as opposed to, well, it's, well, it's not recent, but more recent history with stuff to do with British colonialism. Going back to Rona Munro, I'm very interested to see how she writes a new series story because obviously with the classic series it's structured very differently and she's only got one episode as opposed to one story. We'll see, shall we? Good luck, Munro. Your track record isn't bad so far. Afterhand. So The Eaters of Light is pretty much 50-50 for me. On the one hand, I really like some of the subtext that was explored in this and the exploration of the Celts and the Romans putting their differences aside and just getting on with what's directly in front of them. However, I feel too much of his story was set on the run and the hatred between the Celts and the Romans wasn't explored in as much depth as it could have been. And what the fuck was that thing about crows? That came out of nowhere. I, I, I don't see how that lended itself to the story. I mean, I, if you guys see what that represented, please, by all means, put what you think in the comments below. I also like how they explored the way that the Romans were a very modern society, despite the fact that, in a lot of ways, they were also very much members of the ancient world. You know, imperialism and all. The Romans were indeed very non-caring about sexuality, it just wasn't an issue to them. Like, if you wanted to have sex with a teenage boy, you could just go and have one at a bathhouse somewhere. It was liberal as fuck. Though logically, a black Roman soldier probably wouldn't be a member of the Ninth Legion. It didn't feel as out of place for me as I expected it to feel, and he just felt as if he was just one of those nice, Roman guys. With this episode I am starting to notice a theme that has been running through a lot of stories, particularly Smile, the Empress of Mars, and this episode. And that is the theme of two opposing forces, or species, coming together and realising that their fight really wouldn't get them anywhere, and it, it, it very much parallels, I think, the Doctor and Missy's journey this season, which leads me on to my next point. Missy's redemption arc is possibly one of my favourite parts of this series so far, and I hope to god they don't fuck it up. I don't know what the hell is going through her mind, but whatever it is, like, should I trust her, or shouldn't I? Michelle Gomez is amazing at fooling us, if it is a lie, into thinking that Missy is redeeming herself. I think Rena Monroe's biggest strength is exploring the Doctor and the Master's relationship, because in both survival and this episode, we see two very important leaps in the Doctor and the Master's chemistry together. In survival, we see the Master literally become everything that he wasn't in childhood. He becomes a complete animal that the Doctor just just can't control anymore. Whereas in this episode, we see Missy and the Doctor start to re-establish their friendship, seemingly. It is my firm belief that the Doctor's old friend is still in there, but will nature triumph over nurture. We'll soon see. Also, Sim looks daddy as fuck in that fucking promo. What else to add? Oh yeah, Bell's gay, did you know that?